This is the SimHanger channel, my name's Mark and you're very welcome. And you're looking at one of only two T-188s that were ever made. They were experimental aircraft based in the UK. They undertook a number of test flights. They were supersonic, reaching a speed of nearly Mach 2 and took to the skies in the early 60s. And much of the data, design characteristics and lessons learned formed the basis for some iconic aircraft developments which included, of course, the Concorde. This version is brought to the sim by TG Sim, an independent developer and available from the sim market for 10 euros. Link in the notes below. But this beast was designed simply to go fast and is an absolute handful, but almost guaranteed to put a smile on your face. The external modeling has been done very well, but check out the images where you can form your own opinion. Developed by the Bristol Aeroplane Company, the T-188 garnered the nickname the Flaming Pencil. If you're wondering, well, those are the spoilers or air brakes being deployed. The aircraft was fitted with two de Havilland Gyron Junior engines. Massively powerful, but they did run into a little bit of a problem. These engines well, they've got a thirst you just can't quench. Get up at altitude, get those afterburners on, and, well, you don't have that long before you're going to run out of fuel, despite three fuel tanks. Interestingly, the body was made almost entirely out of stainless steel, and some of the tests undertaken were to check high speed and high temperatures with a stainless steel airframe. It was also experimental in terms of its puddle welding techniques, designed to withstand that thermal soaking when travelling at Mach 2 at 36,000 feet. That's our canopy closed, let's get on the runway and let's get this bird in the air. The highest speed it actually achieved was 1.88 Mach, 2,300 kilometers an hour or an astonishing 1,440 miles per hour. And as I said earlier, well, certainly no slouch. The cockpit represents the area in which it was built. Only one of the two models remain in existence today and it's on show in the Midlands at RAF Cosford. Most, but not all, the switches and dials are functional but there's enough in the cockpit to keep you busy. Now slowly and progressively advancing the throttle. Keep your eye on the speed bar in the centre there. She picks up speed real quick. You've got to be ultra gentle with the rudder or you'll lose control. Make sure you don't get those afterburners on or the engines will suit. Rotating at 200 knots and gently pulling the nose up. 500 feet already. Let's get that gear away before the speed damages them. And let's do exactly the same for the flaps. Had I had a longer runway, I wouldn't have needed flaps. Already approaching nearly 400 knots and 3,000 feet. We're going to climb fairly high today. I'm looking for something around 30,000. We're continuing our climb pressed well back in our seat. Do you remember me mentioning she's a little bit on the thirsty side? That's our fuel gauge there clocking down on the right hand side and I'm climbing without the afterburners on and that's pounds of fuel clocking down or should I say gulping. We've now reached our 30,000 feet afterburners on you can see the two spill lights come on that's telling us both afterburners have engaged and we're just approaching Mach 1. Let's see if we can get it above 1.88 and beat the real world equivalent. Both throttles now fully forward and to the max. As you reach Mach 1 and when you're above that you need to use your trim. She has a nose down tendency at very high speeds and you need to trim to compensate that. 
Oh, one thing I meant to mention, do you know this aircraft doesn't have any lights? Day trips only, I'm afraid. 1.87. I'm going to cheat a little bit, put the nose down and let's see how fast we can get this bird to fly. Pushing the nose down about 15 degrees and she's dropping like a stone. There we go, 1.88, 1.89. Come on, coming up on 1.9. Well, no doubt, if you're in a hurry, well, this is certainly an option. Well, I've decided not to push my luck and I'm heading back to Filton. That's where the aircraft was based, I believe, at least for part of the time, only about five nautical miles from Bristol itself. Well, I guess it's going to be safe to say nothing's going to keep up in the sim with this aircraft, except, of course, the Dockstar. Not far now, so air brakes deployed. With this package you get both variants of the aircraft, the XF-923 and the one that I'm flying today, the XF-926, which was the slightly faster edition. Unfortunately, both failed to reach the targeted Mach 2. This was also one of the first supersonic jets to experiment with a refrigerated airframe. But ultimately, the project was cancelled after an expenditure of something close to £20 million, and this remarkable aircraft faded into history, but it was certainly unique. Don't try and flare this aircraft, you'll bounce all over the place. You need to plunk it on all wheels at one time. If you know what's good for you, don't touch that rudder. Now it does have a parachute, but I forgot to configure that to my joystick. So I'm relying on my brakes. Stop, stop, stop. I'm running out of runway here. Well, I'm sure by now my wheels would be on fire. The end of the runway is approaching rather quickly, but I am slowing down. Am I going to make it? Well, just about. Now that parachute that I forgot about, here it is, deployed. Have done a landing with it. It doesn't do a lot to slow you down either. Make sure you choose a long runway. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed this aircraft and well done to TG Sims for bringing this aircraft back to life. Great fun indeed. As mentioned, it's 10 euros, it's available from Sim Market, and if you fancy this sort of thing, well, let's support the independent developer. Well, I hope you found this useful and entertaining. Take care, look after yourself, see you again soon, and bye for now.